we come to basting the sleeves, we start with the left sleeve. So we can baste, we start the baste from the front pitch to the back pitch. Now we're going to put in our two inches of fullness. That just rule of thumb? Yes, yeah, three quarters of an inch at the bottom and an inch and a quarter on the top. Some calls will take a little bit more, some will take a little less. And all the time distributing the fullness between each of these stitches. I'm sure they get the right amount where I want it. It's having that fullness in the sleeve that gives the gives the sleeve movement. It also provides its shape as well for the drape, both around the crown, down the front and the back of the sleeve. There's in certain positions of the sleeve we can butt fullness. That's not down the front here, we keep, the, keep this relatively flat. If we put any fullness here, it'll show in the front of the coat, in front of the sleeve. So I'm, I'm sure there, there are possibly some houses that cut their sleeves bigger than others. Um, uh, some places is left up to the coat maker's discretion as to how much fullness will put into the sleeve. Some coat makers tend to put in more fullness than others. Cutters would maintain to have a difficulty in cutting the same sleeve for, for two tailors. A lot of houses, the, sleeve, the top sleeve is cut and the, the under sleeve is really left up to the coat maker himself to decide how, how big or small to make it. In some instances it's actually up to the coat maker to cut the under sleeve altogether. And so far it looks to have a a nice front drape here. Stay nice and clean, it's not breaking. It also has a nice black drape as well. To the sleeve. So that was the first base then. So I'm gonna put another one around. So again, lock in the fullness in the position where I want. Some people prefer, you know, rope and flat and then the waterfall, as we call it. Very full in, filled in head. So much so that it ripples through the crown. That has how you create those different sleeve heads is how you cut the top of your sleeve. With a higher, narrower sleeve, with a, with a pitched crown on it, will allow you to create a, a roped top. And if you're looking for something flat for your shirt, you would um, cut the, the top of the crown of the sleeve quite flat, possibly even a little wider to make up for the man. I personally like a little rope in the top of my sleeve, nothing excessive. And that's usually accepted by most of my clients. I haven't had anyone yet to say that they don't like my sleeve head and prefer it another way. Also kind of look at her shoulder seam here and spec to make sure this is nicely coming around here to the front. I'm down the back and I find that where am I? Uh, shoulder pad finishes with my needle in. I want to push it out here. As I've worked out that canvas, I've worked it around for my point, so and I'm pushing my, forcing that point out, I'm forcing out the front of the canvas to allow for the shoulder point. stitching the armhole now around just to the canvas very close to the seam.
breaking the chest here half and half, push the chest into the coat. Press it one half and then you press the other half in order to get the, the dent in the middle. So you don't have to have a board the same size of every chest. Place the needle in the brake line. Break the collar on the stand. And let it roll down to the top button. We don't press it all the way down, we just press it down to a needle. Slip it on to see how it feels the neck. This one feels like it's sitting up nice and tight, so I'm pleased with that.